हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सिद्धेश कुमार उटगी वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट वालचंद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी शोलापुर सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द न्यूमरिकल्स ऑन स्लिप केजेस हाउ टू फॉर्म द रिक्वायर्ड डायमेंशन यूजिंग द डिफरेंट सेट्स गिवन लर्निंग आउटकम्स एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व numericals on slip gauges the following contents will be discussed in this video lecture that is recap of the last session which was about slip gauges and the sets and then the selection of slip gauges and then the numerical will be solved on so in the last lecture we have discussed about what is a slip gauge let us have a recap on that particular topic so slip gauges or gauge blocks are universally accepted and standard of length in industry this were introduced by johansson a swedish engineer and are also called as johansson gauges slip gauges are rectangular blocks of high grade steel with exceptionally close tolerances these blocks are suitably hardened throughout to ensure maximum resistance to wear they are then stabilized by heating and cooling successfully in stages so that hardening stresses are removed after being hardened and they are carefully finished by high grade lapping to high degree of finish flatness accuracy for successful use of slip gauges their working faces are made truly flat and parallel a slip gauge is shown in figure slip gauges are also made from tungsten carbide which is extremely hard and wear resistant the cross section of this gauges are 9 mm into 35 mm for sizes up to 10 mm and 9 mm into 35 mm for larger sizes any two slip gauges when perfectly clean may be run together The dimensions are permanently marked on one of the measuring faces of gauge blocks. Applications of slip gauges. Direct precise measurement where accuracy of the workpiece demands it. They are also used for checking accuracy of vernier calipers, micrometers and such other measuring instruments. Setting up a comparator to a specific dimension for measuring angle of workpiece and also for angular setting in conjunction with the sign bar to check gap between parallel locations such as in gap gauges or between two mating parts ringing of slip gauges if two slip gauges are forced against each other on measuring faces because of contact pressure gauges stick together and considerable force is required to separate these blocks this is known as ringing of slip gauges the success of precision instruments by slip gauges depends on the phenomenon of ringing the slip gauges are rung together by hand through a combined sliding and twisting motion the gap between two rung slips is only of the order of 0.00635 microns which is a negligible value procedure for ringing before using the slip gauges are cleaned by using a lint free cloth a leather or a cleansing tissue one slip gauge is then oscillated tightly over the other gauge with a light pressure one gauge is then placed at 90 degree to other by using light pressure and then it is rotated until the blocks are brought in one line so in this way it happens ringing of the slip gauges here it is oscillated at 90 degree and we form the required dimensions in this way air is expelled out from between the gauge faces causing the gauge blocks to adhere the adhesion is caused partly by molecular attraction and partly by atmospheric pressure when two gauges are rung in this manner is exactly the sum of their individual dimensions the rung gauge 
can be handled as a unit without the need for clamping all the pieces together. Classification of slip gauges. So different types of gauge blocks up to 90 mm length based on the application are as follows. First one, grade 2 gauge blocks are workshop grade for rough checks. They are used for preliminary setting up of components where production tolerances are relatively wide. For positioning milling cutters and checking mechanical widths. Grade 1 Grade 1 gauge blocks are used for more precise work such as setting up of sign bars, checking gap gauges and setting dial indicators to zero. grade 0. These are inspection grade gauge blocks which are used in tool room and inspection department for high accuracy work. Grade double zero. These gauges are placed in the standard room and used for highest precision work such as checking grade 1 and grade 2 slip gauges. Then there is a calibration grade. This is a special grade with actual size of the slips calibrated on a special chart supplied with the set. So the chart must be referred while making up dimension. So these are the following sets we have studied in the last lecture M45 and M83. Based on the number of pieces in that particular set, it was called as M45 and M83. So let us discuss about selection of slip gauges. Start with the last decimal place and deduct this from the required dimension. Select the next smallest figure in the same way. Find the remainder and continue until the required dimension is completed. So minimum number of slips is necessary to build up the given dimension should be selected. So for example, if dimension is 29.758 mm. So the for last decimal place of 0.008 select 1.008 slip gauge. Then we have to uh, subtract the value that is 29.758 minus 1.008 that is 28.75 mm will be remaining. Then for the second decimal place of 0 0.005, select 1.25 mm slip gauge. Dimension left, uh, dimension left will be 28.75 minus 1.25 that is 27.50. So here dimension left will be 28.75 minus 1.25 that is 27.50 mm. Then select 7.5 mm and 20 mm slip gauge to build up the required dimension. Thus we have 20 plus 7.5 plus 1.25 plus 1.008 equal to 29.758 mm. After selecting minimum number of slip gauges in this manner, the gauges can be assembled until the required combination is built up. Now pause this video for a few seconds and try to write answer to the following question. A dimension of 57.775 mm is required to be set with the help of slip gauges as accurately as possible. Set M45 is available. So what is the minimum number of gauges required? 5, 4, 6, 7. Probably uh, you have wrote answer to the following question. Now let us have uh, discuss a numerical on it. A dimension of 57.895 mm is required to be set with the help of slip gauges as accurately as possible. Set M45 is available. Determine the set you will select and the range of dimension set with the selected set. Using M45. So let me just go back to the that is M45 set. So here it was 999 and uh, then it was 45 pieces. Let's go to the numerical now. So 57.895. So it was 1.001 to 1.009. As per the selection of gauges, you have to concentrate on the last decimal place. That is the third decimal place. So here it is 57.895 mm. So for the last decimal place of 0 0.005, we can select that is 1.005 slip gauge so dimension left is the 57.895 minus 1.005 mm that i'll get around 56.89 mm 
then I'll be going for the second decimal place. So in the second decimal place, I have value of 0 0.09. So then I can select 1.09 mm, which is available in the M45 set. So then I'll deduct it from the dimensions which I've got in the last step. So here 56.89 minus 1.09 that is equal to 55.80. Now the same process I'll continue. Now select the first decimal place of 0.8 then I can select here 1.8 mm slip gauge. So then I'll say dimension left is 55.80 minus 1.8 that is 54 mm slip gauge. Now finally I can select 4 mm and 50 mm slip gauge to form the required dimensions. Thus we have 50 plus 4 plus 1.8 plus 1.09 plus 1.005 equal to 57.895 mm. So minimum number of gauges required to build the given dimension is 5. These are the following references. Thank you.